Good afternoon. Everybody awake? <laughs> okay, who wasn't in my last presentation? Was not in my last presentation. Okay. Hi. I'm Frederick. And yes, my presentations are after lunch, so if you're going to fall asleep, I will find you and point you out and say, can you please shake that man back there who fell asleep? <laughs> this um, session is about workflows, publishing workflows, using a module we built from the energy.gov uh, project called State Machine. So we'll get into that. Who here has never written a custom module? Okay. That's all right. That's cool. You're still welcome. We won't, you know, we'll haze you afterwards. But um, so this is going to talk about this module specifically is geared towards developers. So if you have questions like where to put this, how do we do this, please ask. All right? Cool. So again, my name is Frederick Mitchell. I'm with Phase Two, um, formerly Treehouse Agency. Um, I'm a developer, um, and yeah, we're going to talk about state machine workflows. And there's my stuff again. As I said in the last presentation, if you want to follow me, just make sure you, I have one E and no K in my first name. And that's my Drupal handle. Pretty inventive. All right. State machine. What is a state machine? A state machine in the non-Drupal definition right, is a machine that transitions things between states. Right? So you have state red, yellow, green, you have actions that transition between those states. Right? Transition to yellow, transition to green, etc. If you try to run the transition to yellow from the green state, right, it won't work. When you build a state machine, you dictate where you start and where you're going to end. Okay? In Drupal, it's the same exact thing. All right? When you talk about publishing content, right, or going through a workflow of content, the end goal, most of the time, is for that content to be published at some point. Now, there may be a workflow within your client's organization or within your organization where things have to get approved or reviewed, and only people with a certain permission can approve things, and only things that are in approval should go to the review state, etc. So we're essentially taking the state machine idea and tying it to workflows of content. Okay? So in Drupal 7, state machine was built as a way to facilitate that change. Okay? So most of you are probably asking, well, doesn't who's heard of Workbench? Okay, that's cool. So most people are asking, well, doesn't Workbench do that too? Doesn't it allow the user to create workflows and create published states and let you do all that cool stuff? Yes, it does. The one thing it does lack, however, is that it has, it's essentially closed. Right? It uses hooks. It does really cool things with nodes. But if you wanted to customize it, extend it, whatever it is, you can't really do that that well in Workbench. So State Machine came out of the idea that we, want to, we have a basic idea of pushing things through workflow, but different use cases use different workflows, right? So in this company A, they may have a three-step approval process, okay? From draft to for review to approved to publish, whereas this organization over here may have some ungodly bureaucratic like seven-step process or something, right? I'm not going to list all the seven steps because I don't, that was like a nightmare. But the point is, when you build something, especially as a developer, right, laziest developers are the best developers, you don't have to write that twice. State Machine allows you to have the idea of manipulating content, but you can customize your workflow steps. So you don't have to build the revision juggling in there, you don't have to worry about, you know, what it looks like and can they do it or does this person able to do it? You can just build your customized workflows on top of the State Machine API. And, we'll sh and I'll show you how that works. Okay? So what does the State Machine do? How does it execute? So I add, added some colors to my words because it's kind of long. 
the first thing you do when you want to transition a state from one state is what? You make sure the person can actually do it, right? No point in going through this whole rigmarole if the person shouldn't have had permission to do it in the first place, right? So if the state, excuse me, if the state can't transition to that event, can't fire that event. If the state can, but you set up a condition where article content types don't follow that workflow, that'd be a guard condition. Don't need the state machine in that case, right? So the first thing is it does, it checks a guard condition. Second step, do we need to do anything before we get to our event, right? So what does that mean? So if you think of it in the context of Drupal, certain states are consistent no matter what happens before you get to them, right? What does published state mean in Drupal? Right? But from a technical perspective, what has to happen? Status equals one. So anytime you go to a published state, we make sure what? The status equals one. So no matter if you're coming from draft state to approve state to review state, if you're going to be going to the published state, right, and you're clicking that event, we want to make sure that if we're clicking the or transit or using the published event before that transition, we want to make sure that the state or the entity that's being transitioned through the state machine has its status set to one because that's what published means, right? What does unpublished mean? Status equals zero, right? So that maybe would be an event after, right? If something is transitioning out of an event and that event is called unpublished, then no matter what that entity is, right, if it's unpublished, it needs to fire the after transition method for that event. Going back, current state. Is there anything we need to do on exit of the current state? Right, so it's sort of like before transition of the event, but again, it gives another opportunity to do some other stuff. Once we're in that event, we then tell the state machine, this thing is now in this state, okay? If we're going to a new state, is there something we need to do before we go into that state, about the state itself? And then, of course, after the event has fired, there's something that needs to happen after that event, okay? So just from a pure abstract standpoint, this is what a state machine event execution is. Classes. Mm. Right? In my last session, we talked about object-oriented programming principles and classes and stuff. I won't bore you too much. But essentially, state machine is a class. Okay? It takes the execution summary that I just pointed out and abstracts that for you. It defines what a state is. It defines what an event is. It defines the before, the guard conditions, all that stuff. All you have to do is tell it right, what your states are, what those events are, what those guard conditions are. And it'll do the manipulation for you, the execution, okay? State machine comes bundled with a sub-module called state flow, okay? So I wasn't mean and just wrote an abstract class and said, go use my module and you figure it out. State flow actually implements state machine. Out of the box, it gives you the draft, published, unpublished events and states. So if you just have a basic workflow, you can download the state machine module, enable state flow, which will enable state machine, and you'll have workflows on your content types. Okay? Programmatically, what does that look like? All it's doing is it's extending the state machine class. As I said in the last session, that's awesome because if you want to change some stuff, then what would you do? you would extend the state flow class, right? If you wanted to customize some stuff, that's how you would do it. It does use the hook and alters that Drupal does because we are in a Drupal camp, <laughs> right? But the simple things you can do in your extension, which I'll show you an example of, are very, very nice, okay? All right, so let's dive into the state flow class. 
the first method, the init method. Right? So again, state flow is an extension of state machine. State machine is what's doing all the heavy lifting. State machine calls the init method. So what happens in init method? This is actually where you define your states and events. How do you do that? This is how you do it. Right? So let's look at this. What is this saying? This object, everybody, does anybody not know what the this object is in PHP classes? All right, cool. I'm going to create a new state. I'm going to give it a machine name. In this case, it's called published. Right? I'm going to give it a label. The label is probably what the user sees. Right? On enter, again, remember we talked about the state machine execution path. If you're going into the published state, what always needs to happen? You need to make sure that this happens. What is this? Well, let's call, we can say we can pass in a function to determine what this is. Okay, so we don't have to put all of that conditional logic of what publish is right here in the func in this particular um, call. We can reference a function that would do that for us. So this is saying on the onEnter parameter or property, call the onEnter published function and pass in the object. Right? If you're exiting the published state, call this method or call this function and pass in the object. In state flow, this is already done for you. State flow knows what published is. Right? I'm simply just pointing out what happens in state flow. Right? So we initialize. We create our events. We create our states. Here's how you create a state. Okay? We create an event. In this case, I kind of switched it up a little bit. Right? I put the array that determines an event, the label, the origin and target state, just put it in a variable and then pass that to the create event method. Right? So in this case, events, again, got to start somewhere, got to finish somewhere, right? So that's what you're saying. When you fire the publish event, that means something is going from draft to the published state, which means if something is not in the draft state, you cannot fire the publish event, right? Okay. More magic. So when state flow does its implements the state machine okay there are some methods in there that now are specific to how Drupal handles revisions and states etc cetera, etc cetera, okay it comes with a custom table where it'll create it'll get the history for you so as nodes go through different states and get different events get fired it will catalog who did it when it was done, etc. That's pretty cool because if you ever want to do scheduling events, like you know, publish on this date, you can see when something is going to be published because it'll be written to the history table, right? So there's some more cool methods within Stateful that you guys can kind of take a look at and see how that revision juggling happens. And I know you're asking, well, Fred, at least this was simple. This is a whole bunch of like methods and classes and stuff. Where's the simple part? Well, the simple part is in the fact that Stateflow does a lot of the Drupal weirdness for you, okay? Because this is more of a core issue, okay? The big issue with revisions with Drupal right now, and I don't even know if this is fixed in Drupal 8, okay, is that when you use revisions inside of Drupal core, right? So we, know, we all know about the create revisions little box when you publish something, right? Nodes are first class objects in Drupal core, right? It gets its own revisions table, right? Users are entities too, but they don't get a revisions table. Neither does taxonomy, right? So node is like special. It gets its own thing. Drupal says, if you have a revision of a node, right? I'm going to store that in the node revisions table, but the one that I really care about is in the node table. And that means that the node table supersedes what's in the node revision table. That also means that if there's a higher revision in the node table, node revision table, I'm going to break. Okay? 
because it always wants to make sure that the latest and greatest revision is in the node table, even though the node revision table is what's capturing all the different steps and all the different revisions of that particular node. Okay? So the way the state machine and state flow work are it uses that revisions idea to tell Drupal what it should actually show. Okay? So if you think about it conceptually, I had a new node, node one, right? That's the node ID. I publish it. Cool, it's published. I go to edit that node. Right? What State Machine does is that as soon as you click Save, it uses the node hooks to create a new revision. Okay? So all your edits are saved in the node revisions table, right? but because you didn't push that revision through workflow, the previous revision which is published should still remain. The user should still see that. Okay? So even though you have another revision of that node, because it's not published yet, Right? The revision that's in the node table that Drupal looks at has to be a higher number. So what happens is, is that node 1, right, revision 1, it's published. You edit it, that becomes revision 2. So now you have revision 2 in node revisions table, but you have revision 1 in the node table. Ah, Drupal doesn't like that. So create another revision called node 3 that's a copy of, node one, of revision 1 and put that in the node table. Okay, that's that revision juggling is what I'm explaining here. Drupal doesn't like it when revisions have a higher number in their node revisions table than in the node table. Okay? And I know that sounds really weird, but trust me, any work even workbench, revisions, workflow module, they all had to deal with this. Okay? The simplicity, so State machine does a state machine, right? State flow implements state machine. It gives you draft and publish and stuff, and it does the revision juggling, and it fires the events, and it does the history. All out of the box. You haven't done anything yet. You just install it, and it's awesome, and it's cool, right? Now, your client says, you know, this draft publish stuff is pretty cool, but such and such in Department A, they just do not listen when I tell them to stop pasting word into the body of the node object. And every time they do it, it breaks up our layout. So I want to be able to add some sort of workflow okay, to these content types because this person is responsible for this content so that when they add a new revision, they edit it, I get an email, right, or I get a Twitter or whatever, I get a growl notification, I don't know, whatever it is, okay? I get a smoke signal that when a new revision is created, I want to be notified. And I want to be able to, to deny it or reject it if I don't like it. So I don't want to just go from draft to published. I want to go from draft to request to be approved. And then only if I approve it, then I'll say yes or no, okay? Well, in Drupal world, right, Drupal makes tons of assumptions. That's what Drupal is all about. It assumes you want a whole bunch of divs in your markup, right? That's a big assumption that Drupal makes, right? In that same world, state flow assumes you want draft and publish states. But that doesn't work for everybody. So how do you implement your custom states and events into it? You extend it. It's a class, you can extend it. By the awesomeness of classes in PHP, right? A child class gets implemented first, even though it inherits all the methods from its parent, right? So if you have a parent class that has an init method, and it's public, and you have a child class that has an init method, the child class gets executed, right? Better practices say call the parent init method first so you can do that stuff and then do whatever you need to do, right? But this is how you implement your own states and events. It's extendable. How do I do that? Here's some links. Okay, so if you might want to copy those down, you, you can. But essentially, what you're doing is you got to do one of two things first. 
First, you have to tell State Machine and State Flow that you have a customization. We declare that via a plugin. Here are the two hooks that you use to declare that plugin. The first hook tells you where the plugin is. Okay, so there's a certain way you declare your plugin to show my custom states and events are going to be in this file or whatever. So you tell that in hook state flow plugins. Hook state flow machine type alter, okay, tell state flow what the name of your state machine, your customization is going to be. So one tells the location and one tells what the name actually is. This is cool because then you can put conditions around it. So if you only want certain content types or certain users or whatever to go through state flow, you can put that in your alter as a condition before it actually references your customization. Okay? What does it look like? All right? So I admit, Workbench is really neat. It has a really robust UI. When we first wrote state machine and state flow, um, Again, as I said in the last session, we have a context where we have these kind of platform builds and multiple developers. So most of our solutions are developer-centric first. And then as the client requests, well, I want to be able to do this, then we build tools for that. Okay? It's way easier to, to troubleshoot, trust me. It's way easier to troubleshoot when you do it that way. If you give a client views, and then they, you know, no offense to views, but they look at a documentation, and they're like, I clicked relationships and I clicked arguments and I don't know what happened to the view that you built for me. It's like, okay, crap. Right? You got to go in and you got to whatever. With State Machine and State Flow, we built a really simple UI for the appropriate user who has appropriate permissions to fire off what they need to fire off. In this example, what you're looking at is a custom tab on the node screen. Right? So when you go to a node, you get the view, edit, workflow is a new tab that we've added. Okay? On that workflow tab is what you see. You get the status of that particular node. You get whatever revision it's on. Why is that revision number so high? Because energy.gov is a giant site. Right? You have whatever actions you can fire from that particular state. Okay? So in this particular state, at this revision, because it's published, the only thing you can do from publish is to unpublish it. Haha! -ha. Frederick, what happens if you unpublish something straight from here? Does it push the previous published version back to the front? Only if you want it to, right? State flow is extendable. You can do that. We don't assume that, though. <laughs> okay? The second part here is other revisions that are on this particular node. So again, remember, we, we're, the way we're doing our workflow is that we're using the core revision functionality of nodes in Drupal to manage different versions of a particular piece of content and essentially pushing those versions right through a workflow process. Okay? So in this example, we have a revision that the general public sees, and then we have another revision okay? That's behind the scenes that still needs to go through workflow. Okay? All the fields are there, all the custom stuff, right? Because when you create a new field, right, it creates two tables. Right? Just like the node table, right? The table that actually has the data, then the table that holds the revisions of that field. Right? That's how Drupal Core works. So you can have as many fields on nodes as you want, and if you have different if you're at the particular version of that node, you'll get whatever that field value was at that version. Okay? From here, you can see, well, we've customized it a bit, that at the draft state, you can go to for review. You can immediately publish it if you have the appropriate permission, or you can immediately schedule it. Those are custom states and events that we've written as an extension to state flow. Okay? So these are the list of events that will fire it to a particular state. The last part of that is the history. As I said before, we have a custom history table. So as a particular piece of content goes through its workflow, we will capture that history of whoever did it, what they did, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so if you have a need to <coughs> storm down and be like, I know you did it because I see it on the history table. You published that version. You shouldn't have checked with me first or whatever. I don't know. I was pretty nice, so you probably don't storm down to the next office and tell people that. So. 
But there is a history table for you there. Okay. Stateful out of the box has integration with rules and views. Okay. So who likes rules? Who likes views? Cool. Ah, views. <laughs> Fuse is cool, but out of the box, it integrates with those two modules too. So if you want to create a custom rule, view the rules UI, you know, I don't know, so and so has a certain permission, you don't want to write that as a guard condition, that's fine. There's rule integration in state flow. If you want to create a dashboard so you can see or give, you know, the project manager or whatever, you know, where, where are these different rever where are these different versions of this node at is it has it been approved yet has it been rejected whatever it is all those states and events are displayed in view so you can create views a views dashboard for that user if you wanted to scheduling state machine also comes with another module called state flow schedule okay so if you want to have scheduling for your revisions. You can do that. Just enable that submodule. Obviously, the big caveat is that's dependent upon cron. Okay? So, what does that mean? It means that if you say, I want this node to be published at 1105, but cron only runs every half an hour, right? And it's 11 o'clock, it's not going to publish until 1130. Right? So, you got to be careful a little bit there. Because state flow schedule is part of state flow, it's also extendable. So if you want to deny or allow or you want certain custom events to be scheduled, you can do that very easily. Bulk revisioning. This also comes out of the box with state machine. What is this for? In the last session, I talked about the use case where a newspaper on November 2nd. Is election day November 3rd or November 2nd? I can't remember. The 2nd? I thought it was 3rd. Is it 3rd? Okay. So let's say on November 2nd, because I know very, I know I was very like primary and politically conscious. I just want to make sure I get the right date. Let's say on November 2nd, right? It's a toss-up. We don't know who's going to win. Oh, so you look at me way off. <laughs> so on November 5th, right, they've spent all this time basically writing different articles and opinions and et cetera, et cetera, depending upon the outcome of something that happens in real life. So you've got 10 different articles on if Romney wins, you've got 10 different articles if Obama wins, you've got different opinions or whatever, and all of those have gone through different workflows. Okay? How is, how, let's say not even 10, let's say you maybe have 30, right? So you have 60 pending things. And it needs to go as soon as the election result is run. How do you publish all of those things at the same time? Or even better, if it's like October 1st, how do you publish all those things together to go through the workflow together? Within State Machine, there's a bulk revision new tab on the admin content screen. It's a new, new tab has content revisions. Where you can pick different revisions of pieces of content to all go through a state or go through a, a fire and event at the same time. So instead of having to go to each node and click approve, 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 you can pick multiple ones, click one button, and it'll approve all of them together. Okay? That's pretty cool, again, in, this con in, in, this, in what I'm talking about, because if you wanted to publish 30 nodes through your workflow at the same time, given this current event, it's way easier and faster to just do it with this tab versus having to go through each one and do it manually, right? And that's kind of what this slide is implying. You can launch subsites. So if you had a subsite that was based on this real event, but it could go either way, and your subsite is based on, you know, 30 or 40 different nodes, you can use this functionality to do that. It also provides really cool alters and hooks. So if the list that comes back of nodes that should be transitioned to different events, that list needs to be only nodes that are authored by this person or only nodes that are of this type. You can write really neat and quick hooks and alters 
so that the form that's used to filter that list can be specific to your use case. Okay? So think about that. Let's say you have a client who's a publisher, but they just publish... Okay, I'm going to give an example. Let's say Iowa State used one giant Drupal platform. I didn't blow anyone's like skull off with that idea. Okay, cool. And let's say the veterinary medicine program, right? They have their own staff and their own set of publishers. And you want to create a nice little dashboard for the veterinary staff to look at and publish just their content. You could write a hook that would hook into the bulk revision portion of State Machine to say, only show the content, the revisions of content, if they're owned by that role. So if version's logged in, maybe that person's role or that particular user. So when they go in and look at the list of stuff that they can transition, it's different than a different department who logs into the exact same site and sees a different set to actually bulk publish through. Okay? Ignore. Sometimes you don't want everything to go through workflow, but you do need some stuff to go through. Right? Ignore is a method that comes out of state flow for you to set up whatever condition you want for it to use or not use, or in this case, to not use workflow. So, right, Sally is super administrator and she hates having to go through when she's making test content. You know, for review, approve, whatever, whatever, publish. So you could write a condition in your code that says, if we're in the dev environment, or if we're here, or if you're user one, just go ahead and skip it. Like, don't even worry about it. Just show, you know, this. Okay, so you can use an ignore method there. And you can extend it however you want. Aha, this is cool. So State Machine has, uses a library, pair library in PHP called graphical visualization. And this is in the use case where your department or client has created this really, in their words, neat bureaucracy of workflow, but they don't have a good visualization of how it actually looks to the system. State Machine can give you that simply by turning it on. Right? So you build your state, you build your events, all your different conditions, and then State Machine can give you this nice, right, graphical representation of what that workflow process looks like. Is that based on like image visualization? It's a, it's, yeah, it's, it's based on notation for the, I don't, I think it's a, yeah, image graph is, it's a pair library, there's a notation that graph is uses that class. Is, it, is this process more like notation? I think it is, yes, I have to take a look at it again. My, my colleague Roger wrote it. Um, but yeah, I think that's what it is. I remember correctly. I think it's just more the case where it's an intermediary. So the way we're defining states and events, we're then passing that into this library, which then passes it into what you're talking about in terms of using those particular models to create this visualization. Yeah, yeah, you can use different arrows, you can use whatever you want. There's a lot of different options within GraphViz itself. In this case, we're just doing a base, like, states are this, right, our events are that, states are this with stars on them, and then we just made the arrows, whatever. So they're just different methods within GraphViz. Question is, if, if the system, if I change the diagram, change an arrow from here... Oh, you mean, does this, is this like... Does it change the actual functionality of the system? No. No, this is just, this is a ping. This is a PNG, this is an image. It's just report. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, yeah. This is, this is, this is purely a PHP-created image. There's no interactivity with it. That'd be cool, though. <laughs> Patch is welcome. So we talked about this a little bit, right? In the 2x version of State Machine, nodes are first-class entities, right? So because nodes are first-class entities and they come with their own node revision table, 
That is what State Machine 2X was built for, the node scenario. But as we know in Drupal 7, node is just a type of entity, right? And there are other entities within the Drupal ecosystem. Because we're using revisioning, right, the 2X version does not work with any, just any entity. It just works with nodes. Because again, out of the box, core Drupal 7, nodes are the ones that got the revision table and the revision logic and stuff, right? There's a patch impending into the entity API module to allow other entities that are de defined within Drupal core to be revisionable and to have their own revisions tables and to juggle all of that. And when that gets accepted, we will integrate that. But at this point, 2x mainly uses nodes, okay? The 3x branch, which does not have an official published version, okay, was actually a collaboration effort between myself and Palantir to integrate into their workbench module. Okay? So the way to get that working, I'm kind of letting them run that because workbench is their thing. Um, we've obviously collaborated. But they have, there's another piece called Workbench Workflows, which is a module on their Workbench Moderation module that doesn't even have a release link on the web page. So you actually have to go into like the Git repository and Workbench Moderation and go and grab it for that to work. So I think they're still working out some of the issues. Um, but it does work, because they're using it on a client side that apparently no one can know about. So that's fine. So it does have workbench integration. Apparently, I just would have to kill you if I told you how it worked. I don't know. Um, LSD. Who likes LSD? <laughs> Who's heard of LSD? Within the Drupal ecosystem, I should say. LSD stands for Large Scale Drupal. Okay? It's an effort spawned by companies that do not want to be named at this time. Suffice it to say, you probably use them every day that have put money into, or will be putting money, I don't even know what the semantics are. Anyway, it's a whole bunch of big companies basically want Drupal to be awesome so they can stop paying licensing fees. So they're basically putting their money together so that a suite of companies that are working with Acquia can build the large scale implementations of how Drupal could work. Okay, why is that important with State Machine? Because let's say, I don't know, Al Jazeera. Who's heard of Al Jazeera newspaper? Right? They're a huge international newspaper organization. Let's say, again, in the context of random event is about to happen, and we need to have different versions of what our site would look like depending upon that event. Right? Our entire giant site is based off a of Drupal platform. We want to be able to see what that looks like. Large scale Drupal, one of the things that's coming out of there is this site preview system where literally the entire site, not just nodes, but any entity, block entities if you've messed with beans. Beans, anyone? Beans, okay. Block entities, right? User entities, taxonomy terms. Any entity would essentially react to a condition described by what's being architected in LSD, okay? So you can imagine, essentially, it's, it, the best way, it's like time machine for Drupal. Okay? Everyone know what Time Machine is, right? Mac, Time Machine? It's like that. Okay? If Time Machine can go in the future as well. So let's say you wanted to say, okay, we have all these things planned to publish on this date and on this time. And not only are these nodes going to be published, but these blocks that list these nodes are going to look a certain way. right? And these related nodes block, right? let's say you have the little related nodes at the bottom or something, or related pages, or related articles. They are going to look differently when these things are published too. I want to see how the entire site looks in that context. State Machine is, is, is going to be a part of that effort in order to help provide that functionality. Okay, so that's coming down the pipe, and that's pretty exciting. And yes, it'll be part of Drupal 7. That's it. I can show, I have five minutes. I can actually show you what an extension looks like if you'd like from the energy.gov code. The next session, which is the energy.gov case study, is more just kind of high-level overview. 
But if you guys want to actually see code, I can show that to you as well. So, but I want to leave that up to you. Are there any other questions? Yes. How would that work? Can you explain that to me? Uh, you know, uh, you currently have like a workflow system where both people may or may not need to sign up. So you give different different level of priority uh, sort of set up to multiple people, but then eventually converging back on a single setup. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, um, because state flow is extensible, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how that would work. Extended, that's not how it works out of the box. The only quote unquote branching is um, when something is already published. When you edit and save something that's published, it will create a branch of that particular revision to go through workflows before it replaces the current published thing. So you can essentially have something that's shown to the general user and have a whole bunch of revisions behind the scenes going through workflow. And until one of those is published, that's when it will replace the one that the user sees. So that's really the only thing that kind of works out of the box in terms of like branching. But yeah, that's interesting to have two people like edit the same thing and they kind of come back together. I mean. Yeah, that's, that's almost like get abstracted to database data, which would be like ridiculous. I mean, that'd be awesome, but I'm just saying like, I can't imagine the camps of, you know, welcome site builders, we're now gonna do git. <laughs> and understanding what diff and, you know, rebase and merge and all that other cool stuff that git does. Um, trying to like, right? Use, use those analogies for content and site builders. That'd be a fun uh, presentation. In my scenario, it's not even so much like editing, it's the like approval. Oh, OK. Of, of changing the state. So it's sort of a dual okay. thing. So before it can hit publish, sure. or it needs review, these, all these people have to stay. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. So, yeah, that's definitely possible. So, so again, right? The Drupal way is assume, well, at least the way I think it should go. You assume small, right? So you make core small, but you provide ways for people to manipulate that. So yeah, in that case, it'd be real easy to write a state flow extension where you say one of the guard conditions to transition this piece of content from approved to publish is this particular thing has to be filled out. If that thing filled out as some custom form that you built where a person has to log in and say, yes, I approve, yes, I approve, yes, I approve, yes, I approve, then only in that case, right, does that event link to fire to publish show up, then yeah, that's very easy to do. Because every state, again, or every event has an on guard, has a, a, um, a guard condition which you can set to any callback function you want. And if that callback function, like I said, shows a form or whatever, you know, you could do, yeah, you could do whatever you want there. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Interesting. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm, my, my content uh, foo is kind of low when it comes to all the different products that help you with that. Um, Again, the idea is because state flow exposes its events and states and what it can do and where you can hook in, the idea is that if that need comes up, it's very easy to do. And I think that's where the advantage kind of lies over some of the other workflow modules because the other workflow modules kind of assume a bigger right, use case. And so if you want to change something, it's somewhat hard to do so. Whereas this one assumes that you just want the two states and the one event. And if you don't want that, and hey, look, here's all the places you can insert your custom stuff. So if 
your states and events are defined by a third party system, in your init method for your extension, you could call something or do something that connects that third party system, right? And then uses that as the impetus to fire the events or whatever it is. Exactly. So, but at the end of the day, the juggling of the content within the Drupal space, right, is handled by the state machine module, which is that parent class. Yes? Do you know the, the state of this within Drupal 8? Is there a push to incorporate this or something similar? You mean within core? Yeah. Um, I mean, the drafts for a long time seems like it's been very limiting. And sure. Um, I'm not on the core team. <laughs> um, I know that the core team knows about our module. Um, to answer your question, and this is, I'll just say it. There's a little politics there, which I don't like, and I don't, I don't like getting into that. So it'd be cool, but there's like politics with, well, phase two wrote state machine, and Palantir wrote workbench, and this company wrote this workflow, so which one are we gonna pull in? And does that mean that so-and-so has more leverage? And it's like, okay. So, to answer your question, <laughs> I think the answer is no, not right now. But the cool thing about this module, because I know about this module because I wrote this module, is because the initial parent state machine is just a class, it automatically works with D8. So the only part that needs to be fixed is the actual way that D8 handles content and, and however it's going to be defined. I pray to God it doesn't change to some other like esoteric term. Like it went from node to entity to I don't know. <laughs> yeah, bundle, yeah. Square, I don't know, like foo, I don't know. Whatever they I, I pray to God that they don't like, you know, extend that out. But <clears throat> you know, entities have the same hooks as node. I mean obviously they do because nodes are entities. So it'd be real easy if they stick with the entity paradigm, which is what I just needed to find some time to do, is just kind of rewrite another branch of state machine for D eight so that whatever those entity actions are that I'm using for nodes, they just become entity things. So like the pre-save stuff, insert stuff, update stuff, check the revision stuff. Instead of calling nodes specifically, I would just call entity and then just make sure the entities that are going through the workflow would have the appropriate revisions and everything like that. So um, it's hard. I'm like, I can only abstract out so far. So for me, it's hard to write something that doesn't exist. And I know D8 is kind of out there, but I also know D8 changes like, you know, every two seconds too, right? So I, I'm, I'm more of a, I'm going to wait for D8. Um, and then because phase two likes to be like, you know, charge the hill, when I get paid to go and actually, you know, wrangle D8 at that time, then I'll write probably my state machine extension. So, um, but it'll be there. But it works for seven. And seven's cool. I like seven. So. Any other questions? No one C code, that's cool. Okay, code, all right, code. Anyone use PHP Storm, IDE? No one? Okay, PHP Storm, it's awesome. If you, seriously, if you commit to Drupal, if you like show a commit that you committed to a module, did a patch, or even you, know, you run a module or whatever, We'll give it to you for free. So cool, you get open source, awesome IDE for doing Drupal stuff, and you get it for free. It's like a couple hundred bucks, but you get it for free because you're part of Drupal, so PHP Storm. All right, you guys see that? Sort of. So one of these days, I'm gonna get like an email saying, why do all your screencasts show like the code that you wrote that we're paying you for? It's like, why not? Okay. Can you guys see this down here? <laughs> no? You can't see that over there? Sort of? Okay. Oh, PHP Storm, how do you increase the font size? I don't know. Okay. Anyway, we have State Machine, and I have my custom module. And I have my custom workflow module. Let's see, can I increase this? 
No, I cannot. I don't know how to increase the font size on PHP Storm. Control to finger zoom. I'm trying that. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, PHP Storm is funny. All right. Can you guys really not see that? Is it really tiny? Okay. This is what I'll do. I know the people in the video are like, geez, didn't he have this set up beforehand? What the hell? Wait, where's Text Wrangler? <sighs> what is. Oh, it's over here. What? Do you see that? It's like this really tiny thing over here. <laughs> Okay. There we go. You guys can see that better? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have... Where's my two hooks that I want? There we go. Okay, so we have our... Remember I said we have two main hooks that we want. We want hook state flow plugins, and we have hook state flow machine alter. Okay? So the first one tells us where is the plugin that I'm manipulating state flow with. In this case, I'm calling it energy workflow. I want the parent class to be state flow. This is the name of my parent class. This is the file it's going to be in, etc. I just return that array and that hook. Okay? Then in hook state flow machine type alter, I actually tell it what the name of my state machine is called. Okay? So if I go to that file, Right? Can you guys see that? Cool. All I'm doing is extending state flow, and I, in my init method, I'm creating my custom states. So in state flow, right, there's just draft and published. And this customization of state flow, so I haven't even touched state flow, right? I can just create my own states, draft, needs review, approve, publish, or whatever, right? I can still call the exact same function that's in my parent class of state flow which is pretty cool, so I don't have to redo that. Then for my events, I can create my custom events. The for review event is when it goes from draft and needs review. Immediate publish is when you go from draft to publish. Oh, guard condition. Call this function and make sure that this returns true so that the person can actually call this event. Right? So this would be like if they have the publisher role or something, right? You could just put whatever you want in there. Scheduling. I have a schedule event. Scheduling can go from approved to scheduled or immediately scheduled, from draft to scheduled, jumping, making sure that they have the appropriate guard condition there. I have some other cool methods in here. If you have like one that wants to jump workflows, you can call it as the skip to publish and just return what event that is. Okay. And then what should happen if something fails? Like, do you want to tell the user, you know, haha, nice try or whatever? I don't know. You can put that in this method, too. And again, these are just all extensions of the parent class. But again, it's, it's using, right, OOP as like an API for you to be able to kind of do what you want. So it's a small core idea of making some very small assumptions, but taking an abstracted idea so you can do whatever you want, like branched states or pulling in third party you know, pieces to manipulate or whatever it is. And that's it. I mean, this, this defines a whole other set of workflow, and I didn't even have to touch state flow. I can have my own little custom module, my own little world, and be happy. All that stuff you saw in my module file are just other customizations for energy in general. So like custom permissions, as you see, you know, custom node access, et cetera, et cetera. It's just stuff that's specific to them. Okay. You guys want to see anything else, or am I boring you? 
So yeah, here's a good example of a guard condition. Is that person an editor? We have a common callback just to check that permission. And we're just checking to see if the person has the permission or not. If they do, it's user true. If not, it's false. Those are just guard conditions, right? So different roles can get certain events or whatever it is. My goal moving forward is to create a UI for this, to create states and events via UI. Um, I'm just not sure how that's going to look. Because obviously, when you start doing that, you have to kind of expand your assumptions a little bit. And I like smaller assumptions. Right, because sometimes people are like, well, if I create a UI and I have like a dev site and a publish site, like, how do I like do I have to rebuild it all together or whatever, and do I have to export it, etc. And because it's technically a develop, you know, it's an API first. My thought process is, well, if you use the UI, then you just want to build it from the UI. If you want it something that goes through the environment, then you should build it in this way. But I know not everyone shares my assumptions, so I'm still thinking about how to do that. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.